Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Five Minutes in the Word. You know, Derek, we've been talking about love uh, the first three days of this particular series. Right. And yesterday we got on to the, the love of our love of God. Right. And one of the things I think we noticed was that that we're God's children. And because we're God's children, we ought to love like God loves. That's right. We have to love like God loves. We have to love in, in the way that he has shown us. And what's interesting is when we look in the scripture, we can see so many examples of how God loves and who God tells us to love. Um, I think when we look into Matthew chapter 5, uh, we're look here at a different group that we might not think about. You know, we've talked about loving God, loving neighbor, loving our spouses. You know, we talk about all these people we should love. What about our enemies? What about loving our enemies? And so in Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 43, it says, You have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Can you imagine that? That here is someone that is persecuting you, that is possibly saying false things about you, and yet this is the person that you're to be praying for. This is the person you're to be showing love towards. This is the person that God tells us that we have to, we have to love. Like everybody, we have to love them as God loves them. And that's something that's really important. Yeah. God loves us all, doesn't he? He does. He does. And when we, when we think about that, you know, I think about in Scripture, um, back in like first, uh, first Samuel 24. First Samuel 24, you have David and Saul. And here is God's anointed king in, in, in Saul. But here's also David. And David's been on the run. David's been fearing for his life. And yet... Here's this opportunity, 1 Samuel 24, that he has the opportunity to take uh, Saul out. Saul is in a very vulnerable uh, situation, and yet even cutting a piece of his garment, uh, even cutting a piece from that, it it bothers David. Yeah, it, it bothers him because here he is, and he has, in a, in a way, lashed out against, you know, God's king, uh, mm -hmm. the, the one that was anointed. And David, he loves Saul. He loved Saul, even though at that moment he was his enemy. Uh, can you think about anybody else in Scripture that had to to love their their enemies? You know, I don't know. I wasn't thinking of enemies. The first one that came to my mind, oddly enough, was the relationship between Lot and Abraham. That's right. And Lot wasn't his enemy no, by any means. No. He loved him. But but what I see there is here's Lot. Lot is the young guy. Right. Abraham's the old guy, and and yet Abraham says, "Look, you pick. I'll go where way you go. I'll go the other way." That's right. And that stuns me almost. Well, and I think these examples today they they teach us like what you said earlier, so that we can be like the Father, so that we can be like Him. Verse forty five, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for He makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Uh, it goes on to talk about, you know, if we love just our friends, just our family, just yeah. those that we're close to, we're no different than, as it talks about, the tax collectors. as th This group of people that, you know, they're in it for themselves a lot. They're just loving the people that, that help them, that advance their, uh, their life. You know, our love for other people is not about advancing our life. It's about showing the love of God to all. It's about letting them see Christ living in us so that possibly one day, they too may come to, uh, to the knowledge of him uh, and to follow after his word. I, I love verse 48. It says, you therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. We need to be people that are seeking out how we can love like God loves. Um, I, I, we talked about yesterday about the love of God, but uh, I think his, his love has demonstrated us through us so great by sending us his son. Uh, I mean, in many other ways, but... Uh, yeah, and think about that. You know, we've been talking about loving your enemies, hanging on the cross. Right. Luke's first record of anything Jesus says is, Father, forgive them. Right. For they know not what they do. Now, you know, how do you do that? I don't know. I, <laughs> I think about him sitting there at, at, that, at that feast, at that meal. He's sitting there with Judas. He's sitting there with Peter. He knows Peter's going to deny him, deny him. He's going to notice that Judas is going to betray him. He's sitting there and he's sharing a meal together with, with them. 
And washing their feet. And washing their feet. <laughs> How does he do that? But he demonstrates to us what love is all about. Yeah. And so uh, these are just some thoughts I had today, and I hope that they are uh, helpful to us all. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us for thank five you. minutes in the Word, and we will see you all uh, tomorrow for another five minutes in the Word. Bye, everybody. Bye.